Hi, Mom. What's happening? Well, guess what? Megan and I are on a thrilling adventure to meet her parents. Yeah, I was all pumped up until she hit me with a bombshell. No, no, I'll spare you the details. Why? Because I know you, Mom. Ugh! All right, all right. Here's the scoop. We were cruising towards her parents' lavish pad in the Hamptons when Megan drops a truth bomb. Brace yourself. She hasn't spilled the beans to her folks yet. That she's into girls. I know. I nearly crashed the car in shock. Apparently she duped me into coming along so we could make a grand entrance together. Can you believe it? I'm stuck in a sitcom plot. I'm torn, Mom. Should I turn the wheel and zoom back home, or should I trust Megan's belief that her parents will embrace our love? Yeah, I voice the same concerns. I mean, seriously, who willingly announces to their unsuspecting straight-as-an-arrow parents that they're actually gay and in love with a woman? Oh, and by the way, this woman who you assumed was my pal is my fantastic girlfriend. Sorry, Mom. Megan's calling me over. This is going to be a roller coaster ride. I promise to give you a ring once the madness over. Ciao. Love you too. Jenna lets herself in. Lori, where are you hiding? It's like a game of hide-and-seek in here. I'm in the kitchen, Sherlock. Your detective skills need work, Jenna smirks. Maybe I just like a challenge. Jenna walks over. Ooh, something smells terrific. Did you accidentally set something on fire again? <laughs> Funny. Nope, I made brownies. Not just brownies, but my grandma's brownies. Are you sure you didn't mix up the sugar and salt again? Last time you did that, I thought I was eating a pretzel. Jenna goes to pick up a brownie from the tray on the counter. Careful, they're hot, like molten lava. Don't say I didn't warn you. Jenna blows on the brownies and takes a bite. She eats it. Wow, these brownies are amazing. Are you sure they're not store-bought? No, thank you. I slaved away in the kitchen for hours just for you to take one bite and insult my hard work. You wound me. Jenna smiles. Oh, come on. <laughs> you know I'm just teasing you. I'd never insult your culinary skills. Unless they were really bad. <laughs> I'm being serious. They're great. They could make a grown man weak. Well, I'm glad. Because I need them to be. And why's that? Are you starting a brownie-based bribery empire? I plan to use them as leverage to get my boss to write me a reference. Oh, you're still looking to apply for that captain's job. Yes. Are you sure you want that job? You might have to wear a cape. Of course I am. It's the only job that pays well and involves driving around in a shiny red truck with a siren. What's not to love? I'll even wear a cape if it comes with the job. Well, just make sure you don't get too carried away with the superhero complex. We don't need you jumping off buildings to save cats and trees. <laughs> it's the only job I've ever wanted, Jenna. Jenna shrugs. Well, I guess we can't all be astronauts and rock stars. Someone has to drive the fire truck. I really need that job. I still have to pay you back for paying my rent. That's not important. What you need to know is that you can do so much more. Thank you for believing in me. But I want the job. Fine, then. I'll say no more on the subject. Thank you. Jenna takes another bite of her brownies. Your boss will definitely give you the reference. Especially with brownies like this. Wow, they're so freaking good. Jenna takes another bite. <laughs> Seriously, I'm going to get diabetes if I keep eating these. Ah, uh, don't worry. My grandmother's recipe is like a magic elixir that cancels out all the sugar. <laughs> well, if that's the case, I'll take another one. Or three. 
<laughs> Jenna picks up two more brownies. Hey, you never told me why you were fired in the first place. Well, I caught my captain in his office with a man. That's it? That's why you were fired? Well, you see, the man wasn't his wife, and they were screwing in his office. The dick. I raised my eyebrows to agree with her. I exit to my bedroom. I'll be back. I need to change my shirt. I walk off. I walked in to find Jenna sitting down eating my brownies. I put on a white silk shirt. <laughs> you look like you're auditioning for the role of the Phantom of the Opera. Where's your mask? Ha ha ha. By the way, I've had it confirmed with the president, and he's told me your old boss's official name is Dick after all. <laughs> I think that's a very fitting title for him. <laughs> Finish telling me what happened after you found out about your boss's affair. Well, soon after that event, he started making life really hard for me. <sighs> the bastard. He'd give me challenging assignments. He'd make me do all the rookie stuff. I'd like to be in a room alone with him. I wouldn't recommend that. Knowing you, you'd probably roast him over the fire like one of my brownies. He nods to agree with me. He made my life such a living hell. So... Did you report him to his superior? I wanted to, but I knew the guys at the station would come down hard on me. So you left it alone? Why were you fired? One day, I had enough of my boss, so I confronted him about his behavior. But we got into a brawl, and I pushed him. Jesus, Corey. He was probably looking for any excuse to fire you. And I knew it the second I did what I did. And he smiled about it. I don't know him. But I hate this guy. Yeah, so anyway, I was caught on camera and I was swiftly fired on the spot. That's... that's rough, man. Ah, uh, what can you do? So, what makes you think the brownies will work on him if he's already fired you? Well, I'm banking on the fact that my brownies are so good. They'll be my secret weapon. Like, they're my battering ram. You get it? Yeah, I get it. Mature as the joke was. <laughs> We're in the same WhatsApp group, and lately we've been writing to each other. Oh? Yeah, my boss has been friendly, so I'd like to swing him around with the brownies. I hope it works, or I'm just screwed. It will. It's a good plan. Thanks, Jenna. With your encouragement and these brownies, I'm unstoppable. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I look at my watch. Oh, shit. I better head off to the station before my boss goes out. Well, good luck. Not that you'll need it. <laughs> Jenna exits. I use ceiling wrap to wrap up the brownies and then exit. I knock on Jenna's door. She answers. Oh, wow. Did you walk into a door? Or did a door walk into you? I've got a black eye, and my face is bruised. Have a guess. What happened to your eye? Who did this? It was a boxing match with the coffee machine. I lost. <laughs> well, that's what you get for bringing brownies to a coffee fight. One of the guys at the station did this. Jenna allows me to enter. I walk towards her kitchen. So, what happened? Lay it out for me. I tried to get my boss to see me, but he wouldn't budge and see me. Typical. Yeah. And then one of the guys at the station ratted on me and said that I had brownies. Those damn brownies. I knew they'd be your downfall. I know, right? 
My boss wouldn't come out to see me, so I was about to leave when Tony Jackson stepped in. Tony? Ugh, that guy's a real piece of work. I see him on every fire department advert. He's usually standing close to an attractive woman, while ogling her. Tell me about it. Anyway, he wanted the brownies, and when I refused to give them to him, he punched me. I'd like to be alone with that guy as well. <laughs> anyway, the rest of the guys at the station joined in, and now I feel like I've been in a car wreck. Well, you certainly look like it. Jenna turns to exit. Let me go grab some ice for you. Jenna walks to her kitchen. So, I guess this means I'm the tough one in this friendship now? Why do you even have to question it? You damn well know you are. <laughs> That's the right answer. Jenna takes out a bag of ice from the freezer. She walks up to me and puts the ice bag on my eye. You can't let those bullies win. There's not much I can do about it. I wince in pain. Jenna takes the bag of ice and gently puts them on my eye for a second. There's plenty you can do. Oh yeah? Name them. Well, can you let me deal with the situation? You'd make things worse for me. Plus, you're a woman. I don't want you anywhere near those men. They'll hurt you. Oh please, I know Jitsu. It's still a no. Just promise me you'll leave this alone. Promise. Fine. I promise. Sorry. My eye really stings. Oh, I don't have a first aid box. Um, there's a chemist a block away. It's fine. I'm okay. Your eye is bleeding. It could get infected. Look, just sit tight. Thank you. Thank you for looking after me. No worries. You'd do the same for me. But not that you'd ever need to. I know how to beat people to death. You know, it's one of my specialties. And I'm scared. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Or was I? <laughs> just go, you weirdo. Fine. Just keep as much pressure on the wound, and I'll be back as soon as possible. Thank you. Jenna hands me the bag of ice. She washes her hands and it exits. Hi, Mom. Yep, it happened. We finally spilled the beans to Megan's parents about us being a couple. Oh, boy. Let me tell you how it went down. So her mom literally fainted. Yeah, I wish I was kidding. And her dad? Well, he spent a solid five minutes threatening to sue me. Can you believe it? And then her brother started cracking risky jokes at our expense. It was like a comedy of errors unfolding before my eyes. But wait, it gets even more bizarre. When her mom regained consciousness, she resorted to emotional blackmail, trying to make Megan leave me. Of course, that didn't work, so she stormed out of the room. And guess who showed up next? Andrew, their next-door neighbor. Turns out Megan and Andrew were secretly lovers. Can you imagine the shock? And what do Megan's parents do? They try to reunite Megan and Andrew right then and there. It was like a soap opera on steroids. Andrew left with his shoulders slumped in defeat. Anyway, the stress was overwhelming, so I stepped outside for an emergency cigarette, and Megan's dad followed me. You won't believe what he offered me. He actually offered me $10 million on the spot to dump Megan and never contact her again. Can you believe the audacity? Of course I said no. I couldn't be bought like that. So I went back inside and told Megan everything. But here's the kicker, Mom. As we were trying to leave together, the police showed up. Yes, Megan's mom called them. They questioned me about a crime I didn't commit and gave Megan's parents a stern warning about their behavior. Finally, they left, and now I'm out on the porch while Megan has a heart-to-heart -heart with her parents. I have to admit, things aren't looking great for us. Megan's parents are desperate, 
and I'm afraid she might choose them over me. Yeah, it's a tough spot. Anyway, I see her coming out of the house now. Wish me luck, Mom. I knock on Jenna's door. Come in, if you dare. I open the door and enter. Well, well, well. Look who's got some explaining to do. Me? Never. But do go on, detective. Jenna, word on the street is that you threatened Sean. Sean. Hmm, Sean. Sean who? You've got to be more specific. I meet so many people. My boss, Jenna. Quit playing Clueless. Ah, oh, him! I was just lending a helping hand to my dear friend Corey. By jeopardizing my career? You know I've always been a bit of a risk taker. You had my boss in a headlock, Jenna! Headlock? Mm, more like a friendly embrace. Do you think he's going to give me a glowing reference now? Oh, don't be so dramatic. He doesn't even know we're friends. Security cameras. Does that ring any bells? Oh, <laughs> those little things. My boss got his cop buddies to run your face through their system. Wait, am I famous now? <laughs> I'm serious. All right, sorry. I'll take this seriously. He's not pressing any charges. Thank God. Well, that's a shame. I was really hoping for a new wardrobe. Orange is the new black, you know. Jenna, you almost ruined my career. Oh, please. You give me way too much credit. I need you to stay away from my boss. Promise me. Fine, fine. I'll keep my distance. No more headlocks or friendly embraces. I'm going to apologize to him before this blows up even more. Stay put. I'm mad at you. You know you love me, Corey. I exit, shaking my head. There's a knock on Jenna's door. She answers, and I enter. Well, look who decided to show up. In their underwear? Did you forget something, like your clothes? I'm shirtless, without pants. The only thing I'm wearing is my underwear. Funny story. I got robbed. Oh, so they were fashion critics too? I need my spare key. What you really need is a superhero costume. You're already halfway there. Just give me the keys, Jenna. You know, I used to get picked on in high school. Please, not another one of your self-help stories. I sit on the couch. Hear me out. I learned to stand up for myself, and it made all the difference. Great. So how do you propose I take on a gang of 12 all by myself? By letting me handle the situation, of course. And how are you going to do that without making things worse? Could it get any worse? You just paraded across town in your skivvies. Fine. What's your brilliant plan? So, I'm going to write you a script. A script? A what? You know, a hostage-type video, but with a twist. This is going to end well, I'm sure. Trust me, it'll be a hit. Now, sit tight while I go set up the scene. We're gonna need some sheets and better lighting. Jenna exits.
Jenna gestures for me to cry. <laughs> and cut. Bravo. Meryl Streep's got nothing on you. Jenna stops filming on her phone. So, what's the plan with this tearjerker of a performance? Oh, I'm going to show it to your boss, of course. And that's going to secure my glowing reference? Not exactly, but trust me. Why do I have a sinking feeling about this? Relax, Corey. I've got a plan. First, we find Lucio, our video editing maestro. Then, let the sympathy roll in. Jenna exits. Jenna, I'm counting on you. This better be good. Forget about it. <laughs> I shake my head. I'm cooking dinner for Jenna and me as she enters. So, um, I have some good news and some bad news. Oh, great. You've become a fortune teller now. Just spill it, Jenna. Well, there's a viral video of you looking rather... pathetic, and it's circulating the internet. Of course there is. You and your brilliant plans. Hey, I never meant for this to go south. Well, congratulations, Jenna. You're officially the captain of the Titanic. Okay, that was harsh. I thought your boss would sympathize with you. He's a monster, not a fairy godmother. What were you thinking? Well, I was thinking that he'd finally see how miserable you are under his thumb. Now I'll never get a job without becoming a laughingstock. Oh, come on. It's just a drop in the vast ocean of the internet. Nobody's even watching it. <clears throat> Jenna's phone pings. She checks it, and her face falls. So, uh, about that. Fox News just shared it on Twitter? Get out. Corey, I'm really sorry. I said get out. Look, we'll fix this, I promise. I said get out. Okay, okay. I'm going. But remember, every dark cloud has a silver lining, right? I glare at her. Yep, you're super mad. Jenna exits. Hi, Mom. Yeah, we're finally back home. And guess what? I said we. Megan chose me. It was quite the showdown with her parents. They gave her an ultimatum. Either leave me or kiss her inheritance goodbye. Can you believe it? But guess what? She chose love over money. She would have lost a whopping $80 million. But here's where things get even crazier. Megan's grandma showed up, and boy did she shake things up. Megan spilled the beans to her about everything her parents were doing, and her grandma got furious. She took our side and then dropped a bombshell of her own. Turns out Megan's mom used to be a lesbian before she met her husband. Can you imagine the drama? Megan's dad had no clue. Well, let's just say it all hit the fan. He stormed out in a fit of rage. And in the midst of the chaos, Megan's grandma made a promise to Megan. She assured her that if her parents ever cut her off from the family, she would pass on her own money to Megan instead. Talk about a plot twist. So yeah, I'm okay. It's been one heck of a roller coaster day, but we're just relieved that the meeting with her parents is finally over. Oh, and by the way, Megan wants to meet you, Mom. Can we fly out to see you next month? Great, I'll let her know. Thank you. I really love her, Mom. I think she might be the one. I mean it. Anyway, I'm exhausted, so I'm heading off to bed. I'll give you a call in the morning. Love you, too. Oh, and please give my regards to Vinny and David when you see them. Love you. Bye.
I knocked on Jenna's door. She's dressed in a robe as she answers the door. Well, look who's here. Hey. I try to enter, but Jenna blocks my path. Uh, can I come in? You seem awfully cheerful for someone who was angry at me a couple hours ago. Well, let's just say some of my fortunes have changed. Oh? Do tell. CNN got wind of my story, and they want to do a piece on me. No way! Yep, my old boss went on Fox News, badmouthed me, and ended up getting fired. Now his boss wants to make amends. <laughs> Talk about poetic justice. Yeah, it seems like my old boss tarnished the fire department's reputation. So what's the plan to clean it up? I have an interview with CNN. I just need to say nice things about my old station and maybe I get my job back. So you're giving up the captain's position? I guess so. Hori, they humiliated you. They made you walk half naked across town. What are you suggesting? I say... You use this opportunity to go for that captain's job. You've earned it. Yeah, you're right. Thanks, Jenna. And I wanted to apologize for my part in all of this. I think I went too far. Hey, you had my back. And that means a lot to me. You've always been there for me. There aren't many people like you. Thank you. I'm glad I could help. So dinner? To celebrate? Uh... There's a sound of coughing. <coughs> uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. I've got plans. You should go. A lamp crashes in the background. What was that? Nothing. Uh, we'll talk later. Bye! That sounded like a lamp falling. It's fine, Cory. Just go. Is someone here? Maybe... Jenna looks guilty. Goodbye. I exit. Why are you upset, Cory? On this change of events, we sound out. The Apartment was voiced by Paranoia and Nelson Zapata Correa. The show was written and directed by Joao Encida. If you enjoyed this episode, we kindly ask that you rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. That Love Podcast is active on Twitter at That Love Pod and on Instagram and Facebook at That Love Podcast. And if you're interested in helping us expand the podcast, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash thatlovepodcast. Thank you for your support, and we hope you have a wonderful day. The Fable and Folly Network, where fiction producers flourish. Ready for a story you haven't heard? Realms of Peril and Glory. From one-shots to campaigns. Indie games to established titles. We are playing Liminal. Cyborg. Thirsty Sword Lesbians. Dungeons and Dragons. Agon. Thirteenth Age. Join Liz. Laura. Zach. James. Maddie. Naomi. And Pip. Nice. Yay! Yay! Well, that was a delight. And a rotating cast of incredible guests. Hello, I'm Grant Howitt. Ethan Blades. Sasha Sianet. Harmony Bundell. As we weave thrilling new stories with gorgeous sound design and beautiful original music. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> so, what are you waiting for? Grab your dice and go explore the realms of peril and glory. Go to realmspod.com today or search Realms of Peril and Glory wherever you listen to podcasts. Podcasts.